Hello and welcome to the uh, user guide video for the course statistics uh, software. Um, I also call this software CSGO, which is short for course statistics grades and outcomes. So it basically generates an Excel file with um, course overall grades and course learning outcomes. Um, as we will see a full example in this video. Uh, now, first, in order to download this software, here is the URL uh, for the website. Uh, when you go to this URL, uh, you will see uh, this page. Here is the zip file. Uh, basically, we will need to download this. It is a little bit larger than 20 uh, megabytes. Uh, so I uh, downloaded it beforehand. Now, as for installation, now this zip file contains a folder with everything in it. So you just need to uh, unzip the contents to a place wherever you wish on your hard disk. And here is it is uh, unzipped. Uh, and that's basically it about installation. Uh, this is a um, Java uh, software. Uh, I tested it with Java version 8 and 11. So it should run without any problems. Uh, you can just go to java.com to check if your system has Java or not. Now let's look at the zip contents. Uh, so we have a few uh, folders. Uh, the library folder contains some extra libraries for the software. They need to be here. Uh, samples. Uh, we will go through this sample uh, Galaxy 101 course, a hypothetical course, and we will generate the uh, course statistics uh, for this course using two different grading systems. So this folder contains all these samples that you will see in this video. Uh, if you are a developer, the source code is also in the directory. Uh, there is also the UML class diagram here and all the source codes. If you are not interested in any development, you can actually delete the source directory. Uh, it's not important for the application. Now we have systems directory. This contains grading systems. You can add your own universities, your own department's grading system here as well. Let's look at uh, sample one. So all these grading systems are uh, stored as HTML files. You can just double click on them. You can view them. Basically, in each grading system, there is four important pieces of information. A name that we give to the, a short name that we give to the grading system. The order in which it is going to appear in the main application window here, there is a combo box and the order in which we want the grading system to be. Uh, this is the second piece of information. The third one is numerical grade ranges and the corresponding letter grades for your own university or department. And the last piece of information is an Excel formula, which is going to take a numerical grade and convert it to the letter grade of this grading system. <coughs> now, this is the four pieces of information. Also, we can look at, uh, this is, for example, Middle East Technical University. This grading system is common to both undergraduate and graduates in METU. We also have Nazarbayev University graduate grading system and also undergraduate grading system. Now, if you would like to add your own university's grading system, you can just copy one of those. Let me show you the code. Uh, so this is a regular HTML file. The important parts are here. There is an HTML element with the ID label. So this is the short name, the label that will appear on the combo box. Uh, there should also be an HTML element with the order in which we want to see this label in the combo box. It has the ID order. 
then we basically have an HTML table elements with ID table. So this contains table rows with two pieces of columns data. Uh, first one is letter number grade range and the second one is corresponding letter grade for your own university. And finally, there is an HTML element with ID formula. Uh, so this is the formula that converts numerical grade to a letter grade. Here, the cell is a placeholder. It will be used by the software. It will be replaced by the actual Excel cell, which contains the numerical grade. So if you just make a copy of this and edit uh, all these important, four important pieces of data, plus anywhere else, the HTML, CSS, as you wish. And if you put it in this directory, so the software will find it and include it in the options for grading. So we have this folder, and then this jar is the main application. Um, there is also a stub file. Uh, the application basically each time you use it, it creates a copy of this stub and then it fills it in according to your specifications. So this stub has two sheets and the generated Excel will also have two sheets as well. So this also needs to be here. There is an icon uh, for the application. There is a logo um, and there is a batch file to run the application. So this is basically the contents and how you can add new grading systems to the software. Um, now the purpose for this software is actually uh, to generate an Excel file. It will have two sheets as we will see. And uh, in the end of the semester uh, for a course that you have offered, uh, if you want to keep all your student grades and achievements levels of your course learning outcomes compactly in an Excel file, this is just for you. Uh, so this is the uh, purpose. It also started, the project started um, as a way to improve Nazarbayev University's template Excel file. So actually Nazarbayev University School of uh, Engineering and Digital Sciences, uh, they provide a template to the instructors at the end of the uh, semester and they need to fill in all these uh, data in this Excel file. Um, but this project actually improves on that Excel. Uh, first of all, the Excel given, the template given to us is uh, for Nazarbayev University only for undergraduate grading system. Now this software generalizes it to any grading system. Um, also that template has fixed number of learning outcomes, fixed number of slots for entering data a number of assessments, etc. But this is uh, generic. This software creates a customized Excel for your own course with the number of students, number of assessments and number of course learning outcomes specific for your own course. Uh, plus the formulas um, that are inserted into the Excel by the software, they are very nice formulas. They are array formulas mostly. They use named ranges, as we will see in the example coming up. Uh, they are very easy to understand, easy to follow. So these are improvements over um, the template that Nazarbayev University provides to its School of Engineering and Digital Sciences instructors. Now, in order to, so we will uh, see an example. First, we will need to run the code. Uh, if you have Java installed and configured nicely, normally, if you double click on the jar file, this should run the software. So this is the main window. Uh, you should see this. Now, suppose that this doesn't work. In this case, you can actually open up a shell, a command prompt in the same directory here, course statistics directory, and you can type java-jar and the name of the jar file. This is a second way to start the application. And there is also a third way. I will just exit this window. There's a batch file for Windows users. So this also has the, if you look inside, 
it is the same command that we just typed. So instead of typing this, you can also double click on this batch file. Um, and this is going to ask for probably uh, some permission and then it will run the same command. So all three ways, there are three possible ways to run it. I will just double click uh, the jar and we will start the main application. Now for the example, now suppose that you have offered a course. So I will go to the samples directory. Let's say that you have just offered a course uh, course code is uh, Galaxy 101, and the name of the course is Intergalactic Relations. So let's say the semester has just finished recently. You have 48 students here. This is a hypothetical course with hypothetical students. And suppose that you have uh, administered, you checked the attendance of your students, you graded them out of five points for attendance, you assigned two homeworks. The first one was worth 15 points. The second one was worth 10 points. You also had the students work on a project out of 20 points total. Uh, plus, you also administered a midterm exam out of 100 points and the final exam also out of 100 points. Now you have all students' names, ID numbers, and all the grading information. Uh, available to you. Uh, optionally, you may have calculated their overall grades, the weighted sum of all these grades, and maybe you assigned a letter grade uh, to them. So these two columns are optional. The Excel that we will generate, it also creates formulas to calculate overall grades and letter grades. Now, in addition, so at the beginning of the semester, uh, you set five goals for your course and maybe you announce them to your students. So uh, when this course finishes, students will be expected to recognize major galactic federations, understand intergalactic social differences, etc., etc. So you have five goals. These are course learning outcomes. And also you uh, set some weights. For example, the attendance measures Actually, it contributes 20% to measuring the first learning outcome, 20% contribution to measuring the second learning outcome, etc. And the first homework, let's say, it has 25% contribution to measuring the first out learning outcome. Uh, it has 5% contribution to measuring the second learning outcome. So basically, you have this matrix of how much each assessment contributes to measuring which learning outcome. So this data uh, needs to be ready. Basically, we will need it. Uh, so this is a sample course. The semester is over. We have the grades and we also have the weights of each assessment in measuring the course learning outcomes. Now let's keep this aside and let's turn back to our course uh, statistics software. Now, in order to create us an end of semester statistics um, Excel file, so we need to fill in this data. Now the course code and title for our course is uh, Galaxy 101 Intergalactic Relations. Okay, now which grading system do we want to use? Here I used, I think, uh, Nazarbayev University undergraduate grading system. So maybe just check the same. The year that we offered the course and the semester, uh, by the way, the year and semester, these are editable combo boxes. So you can actually write whatever you wish to see. Now the course coordinator, is myself, number of students. We had, let's say 48 students. We administered six assessments in this course and we had five learning outcomes. So this is the first piece of data we need to fill in. 
Next is we need to click uh, uh, the set assessment and course learning outcomes data button. And this opens up a dynamic window. So in this window, there are as many as the number of assessments we mentioned. These are the rows. And we have learning outcomes. We mentioned there are five. So this dynamic window opened up five learning outcomes in the columns. Also, there are extra columns here. The first one is, what is the name of our first assessment? So the first assessment is attendance checking. Okay, the second assessment that we administered is homework number one. We have homework number two. Then we had a project. We had midterm exam and we had a final exam. So these are the names. If you don't fill in any one of these first column cells, the default value is the label here. So for example, if you don't type attendance, if you leave this empty, this is going to be used as assessment dash one. So label is the default value here. But if you type the name, this will be copied to the Excel that will be generated. Now the weights of these um, assessments. Now the default value is zero. You can actually leave this column empty, but they will have zero weight. Now the weights for uh, this example is the assessment number one, which is attendance. This is 5% uh, of the overall grade. Homework one is 15% of the overall grade. We have 10%, 20%. 24% overall grade goes for the midterm exam and the last 26% is for the final exam. Now these are uh, percent weights of each assessment. Now, what are they graded out of? So these are the maximum grades. Now, as we can see in the example Excel, so attendance is graded out of five points Homework one is graded out of 15 points, 10 points, 20. And midterm and final exams, these were graded out of 100 points. By the way, the default value for this column, cells in this column is 100. So you can actually leave it empty if you want 100 to be used as the value. Now here is the matrix, uh, which is matching um, how much each assessment contributes to measuring the course learning outcomes. Basically, this matrix need to be entered here. Uh, by the way, if you don't enter any values in these cells, the default value is all zero. And one other thing, you can also enter these values later after the Excel is created. Uh, but if you want, so uh, the first assessment, which is the attendance, it contributes 20% to measuring the first course learning outcome. So here is 20. Also attendance uh, contributes 20% to all of these course learning outcomes. So I can just type 20 in each of these first row entries. Now assessment number two, homework one. So it contributes 25% to measuring first learning outcome. It contributes 5% to measuring the other second course learning outcome. And it goes on like this. I will leave this part empty and fill it in later once the Excel is generated. But if you put the data here, they will be directly copied into the Excel and you don't need to go a second round after the Excel is generated. Okay, so this is, uh, you, this, you need to keep this window open this window holds the data, don't close it. And we need to go back to our main window and finally click this generate button. So this generates the Excel and asks us to give it a name and save it somewhere. Okay, I choose desktop. I accept the default name, course statistics. Okay, this is for the Galaxy 101 course. So let me just change the name. Okay, let's save it. Now here we see the output. We are done basically. You may close this window now, you may close the main application. 
uh, basically we are done. Uh, now uh, let's first look at the output. The output is expected to be an Excel file. There are nice formulas all inserted for us. Um, it is ready for us. Now you see it has two sheets. The first one, we need to copy and paste student grades here. Uh, all the colored cells, these are all uh, filled in with formulas or the data we entered uh, in the two windows. Uh, so you see at the beginning of the first sheet, there is this uh, information about the course that we entered in the main window and the name of the course, the grading system we chose, the year and semester information, course coordinator and number of students. And here uh, we mentioned that there are 48 students. So 48 rows are created. Um, and uh, we need to fill in. So let's go here, go back to our own course records. Let's copy uh, the student's name, IDs, and the grades for each of the six assessments. I'm just copying this with Control C. And here I'm pasting it. I'm just pasting the values. And as you see, uh, the formulas just kicked in. Once the data is entered, they calculated the letter grades according to the formula uh, that we entered uh, in uh, uh, the uh, grading system HTML file. Okay, so uh, this is the output. Uh, let's uh, look at, so these are the weights that we entered for each assessment. These are maximum grades. These are directly copied from the data we entered into the window to here. Here, this is a formula automatically inserted by the software. So this calculates the mean of um, average of uh, the first assessment grades. Um, as you see, you can also see here, it uses nice named ranges. For example, assessment one grades is the name given to the first column of this table. Uh, letter grades is here, the letter grades calculated by the formulas. And as you see, if the letter grade is um, I uh, or W, W for withdrawn, I is for incomplete. Uh, so these are not uh, calculated in, uh, accounted for in the mean calculation. So all I and W grades are discarded. The rest is used for calculating the mean grade for the first assessment. And we have standard deviation calculation. Again, when you look at the formula, so it calculates assessment one grades standard deviation only if the letter grade is not I or W. Um, also, I can show the formulas, if you go to formulas tab, name manager. So these are all the named ranges inserted by the software. We have assessment one grades, the name given to this column, assessment two grades. So for each assessment, we have a named column, maximum grades for assessments, mean grades for assessments, uh, the weights for assessments. And then in the next sheet, there are weights uh, of the course, first course learning outcome, the weights uh, measurements by each assessment for the first learning outcome, uh, the second course learning outcome, the weights of each assessments for measuring second course learning outcome. Uh, basically, so we have nice named ranges for everything. So you have great frequencies, you have great labels, everything is nicely named and all the formulas used is easy to follow uh, named ranges. Okay, so first sheet is about grades. Once we filled in the grades, the um, overall grades are calculated automatically and the letter grade that corresponds to uh, the grading scheme according to the grading uh, system that corresponds to this numerical grade is also calculated by the formula we uh, mentioned. Uh, in the second sheet, again, at the top, we have the course information, the same information. Then we have two plots. 
The first one is the distribution of letter grades, a histogram of count of each letter grade. This is also automatically generated and achievement of course learning outcomes. So according to the weights we mentioned, these are automatically calculated and plotted. But remember, we didn't enter all the weights correctly. So what I will do is um, you can enter it after the Excel is generated. So I will just copy this and I need to paste it here. It's just that it needs to be translated, uh, transposed. Uh, the rows need to become columns, columns become rows. And also I can just change the bordering as this is a regular Excel. Um, now you see we have the data entered here and the course learning, the achievement levels of course learning outcomes are automatically calculated and plotted. Um, now after generating this, so this is the Excel file. Uh, as we mentioned, the output is Excel with all the formulas, calculations entered for us. We just need to put the student grades. What can we do? Uh, what else can we do after generating this Excel? Uh, this is a regular Excel file. So anything you can do on a regular Excel can be done here. Specifically, I would like to mention something. So as a side effect of the uh, library that I used to create this Excel, sometimes the cells, uncolored cells created by the software, when you would like to enter data manually, so it turns black. Uh, there is a background color uh, inserted into those cells. So first thing is select all white cells, uncolored cells, and go here and say no fill. Now this is going to fix it. So here now, uh, whenever you would like to enter some data manually, uh, this will behave just like a regular Excel cell. Okay, second thing is obviously we need to fill in the data uh, manually by ourselves. Uh, by the way, in the second sheet here, there is uh, uncolored cells as well. So it's also useful to just say no fill on these as well. This part is regularly colored. I just deleted the color when I was pasting values inside. So you don't need to do anything here, just these empty white cells and these white cells. If you say no fill, this is going to fix the black background coloring. Now, second thing, okay, we need to fill the grade data. One other thing, so the formula on the HTML pages, it usually converts numerical grade into letter grades from A to F, uh, but these special grades like incomplete and withdrawn, they need to be specifically entered, manually entered, because the formula does not have any way to calculate, to know if the student has withdrawn the course or not. And if you go back to our sample course, you see we have actually two students with incomplete grades. They are given extra time to finish up. And there is also a student which withdrew from the course. So we need to manually enter these grades into the Excel generated. Now I have incomplete, incomplete and withdrawn. Now, once you enter this, the rest is going to be taken care of by all the formulas. Uh, the course overall mean, standard deviation, and the mean and standard deviation for all assessments, uh, they will not include I and W grades. So they are automatically structured like that. So you don't need to do anything. Now these three students, they will not be included in statistic calculations. Uh, also, let's say uh, this student, uh, let's say, got 89.92. And normally, according to the formula, anything below 90, this is going to be B plus. But you may have increased or rounded up to 90 and maybe changed the student's grades to A minus. So you may bumped up one letter grade because it is very close to the boundary. 
this is also something that you need to manually change. So I can just change this to A minus uh, because the formula um, doesn't uh, have a way to calculate these uh, manual rounding ups. Anyway, so after uh, I will just take this back. So uh, if the formula calculates the letter grade incorrectly, you need to manually fix it yourselves. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, also, we can do, for example, here Excel is giving us warnings for all these cells. As you see the green small triangles on the top left. So I can just say ignore the error. It's basically warning us that there is a number cell here and you are not taking into it into consideration when you are calculating the overall mean. But this is okay, we know about it. What else can we do? We can apply numbering formats. So for example, this is all these cells. I select them. I would like to apply them numbering format with one decimal places. Also maybe here, the overall grades, maybe we would like to see them as numbers with just a single decimal places. Good. You can also sort the table according to any column you wish. Um, okay, here, for example, we can select these and maybe we need numbers with two decimal places. So any such uh, alignments, arrangements can be done. Also, I select everything and I just resize all the columns or to automatically size them to fit their content. Here um, also you see this uh, frozen pane, it nicely keeps the header part of the table at the top and you can scroll down to see all the students. So this is about the first sheet. If we go to the second sheet, again, we have the plot which automatically calculated uh, the histogram for us. What else can we do here? I can do a right alignment if I want. Um, I can play around with these numbers. Um, also here, usually we can just apply a number format with single decimal places. Um, also, since this is a plot, if I want to see it larger, I can go here in the alignment tab, snap to grid. And now it snaps nicely to grid and I can change its size. I can make it larger if I want. And basically again, select everything, maybe automatically align all the columns to fit their, uh, to, fit to their content size. And um, that's basically it. So we have the second sheet, we have the first sheet. Now we can save for a final time. And this Excel is uh, basically keeping all the overall statistics for our course. We can just archive it. Uh, this might also be useful in course uh, program accreditations like ABET or um, other organizations. And this is basically how we use uh, the application. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, output we generated and we also modified the contents after generating the empty Excel. Um, it should be the same as here uh, in the samples file. Uh, already this worked example exists. So you can also have a look at it. Uh, plus I also generated this twice, once using the Nazarbayev University's undergraduate grading system. Uh, the second example in this folder is the same course this time Let's say it is offered in Middle East Technical University and I applied a Matthew Common grading system. So now the letter grades look different. Other than that, we have the same data uh, stored in our Excel. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, watching the video. Have a nice day.